Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Flesh Wound Farce, where we discuss and review your and our favorite comedy films. This is the world's first and only combination trivia host and professional wrestling announcer of Chilean descent that currently resides in Southern California, Ozzy V. And with me as always in the Northern Bay Area, the world famous juggler known as Greg. That's right. <laughs> hey, how's it going, right. Ozzy? It's good. Statement's totally valid. You can Google it later. I'm doing well, Greg. How you doing? Man, life's great. You know, it was great watching this movie again. It's been mm-hmm. some time. Um, it's probably the first time I've watched it sober, um, but it was <laughs> fun. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a good time. I'm glad you were still able to enjoy it uh, without the party favors. And also with us, Flash Wound producer Todd. Nine What's times that? out of ten chilling. Yes, I am, and I will not confirm nor deny if I was <laughs> what I was doing while watching it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Ladies and gentlemen, this week, in case you're wondering, we did review the film Half Baked, continuing on our Stoner film series. In fact, the last film in our Stoner fi- film series for 2021 is Half Baked, starring Dave Chappelle, Jim Brewer, Harlan Williams, as well as um. Guillermo Diaz as Scarface. Just wanted to get those four in there because those are the most prominent characters. However, before we jump into the discussion with our segment featuring a commercial, we're going to switch it up a little bit. So over 10 years ago, Jim Brewer did a series of commercials for Pizza Hut. There was some sort of uh, campaign that was like, oh, is it real or not? Whatever. It was still fun to watch. So please Enjoy this clip of a behind-the-scenes look at Jim Brewer during a Pizza Hut commercial. Todd, if you'd please do the honors. Hey, dinner. Ready? Good Here we are, ready. Okay. And we can this when we're done. What's the line? When we're done. Stuffed crust, pan, pizza, kaboom. Okay, stuffed crust. Goodbye. Here we are, ready. And action. Stuffed crust, pan, pizza, kaboom. Cut, cut, cut. Chow time. That's for camera. I know it's for camera. All right, here we go. Let's go. One more take, please. The next one, though. Let me eat it. All right, here we go. Rolling. And mark it. That's good, too. Ready, Jim? Ready? And action. Stuffed crust pan pizza. Kaboom! Cut. Right, and we're cut. You need to be a little less in the eye. That's for camera. What? Yes. I do want to. I seriously do want to bite it. Well, it's done. All right, okay. Here we go. It's very serious, bro. Quietly, please. Here we go again. Rolling. <laughs> it's fun. It's for and it's for the company. marking. Quiet, please. Here we go. Ready and action. One oh, more time. Here we go. And action. Dude, relax. I'm not even biting. He's like this. Like a like a like I'm taking his wallet. Don't don't be taking me pizza, son. Don't be taking my pizza, lad. Stuffed crust pan say, pizza. Just, just, just say it. One Don't, time. Even think sorry, about sorry. It. Don't even think about Ready? it. Ready? Stuffed crust pan pizza. Stuffed complete. crust pan pizza. Here we go. Ready? And action. Stuffed crust pan pizza. Kaboom! Cut. Perfect. Kaboom! Nice. Dude, don't roll up on me, man. Relax, man. Why? Now we're going to do Shoot this. No, why don't you film this now? Film wacko over here. Dude, why are you even following me? And why is it why is this not a problem with everyone else if this guy keeps coming near me? Hey, 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 come on, come on. Right, here. Right, right here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Ray, you alright? Okay, so just to recap for anybody listening to the audio version of this podcast, here we had Jim Brewer uh filming this pizza. He was saying whatever his line was, and he kept trying to eat the pizza, you take a bite of the pizza. After each take, and the whoever was in charge of the pizza kept grabbing it from him, and that's where you heard the altercation coming from. Who he was referring to? This guy just keeps coming at me, and he explains how he was hungry and, and whatnot. And then the splash you heard was Jim shoving this guy into the pool after this guy kept chasing him for the pizza. It was just a, a stupid, funny visual, and I think for the kind of show that we have here, it was appropriate to share, especially when we have Jim Brewer in our main feature, Greg, man, uh, there was a, a brief moment 
where I was like, I wonder if I wonder if any of that was real. <laughs> like if there was a take where like maybe at one point someone did try to grab the pizza and then he was just like, I got an idea, guys. <laughs> you know? So because I'm sure Jim Brewer being who he is, was he's like, a smart I dude. really want a slice of this pizza. <laughs> so. Todd, any thoughts? Well, you know, me. first thing was, uh, it's a work, but <laughs> I didn't know this backstory going in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. I wonder like how much, you know, they did know because he calls out like towards the end when like, why is anyone stopping him? So I don't uh-huh, know. Right. It, I, were they messing with him? And then, yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of curious on that, that side. I just like it when you see a comedian get angry. And mainly because of whenever a comedian gets angry, it usually results in something funny happening as, <laughs> you know, right. following. Like a lot of times I'm thinking of uh, specifically Steve Hofsettler, who posts a ton of his heckler videos online. And I absolutely love each and every single one. So when I see, you know, a Jim Brewer look, pretend to be angry, I'm like, oh, what's going to happen next? You know, like, where is this going? Uh, So even though, whatever your thoughts on it, it was still a fun thing to watch. And of course, if you're listening to the audio, you're like, well, that didn't seem like much. It was just a couple minutes on the video. It's pretty fun. Now, we are discussing Half-Baked today. This film released January 16th, 1998, with a runtime of one hour, 22 minutes, and of course, rated R. Now we're going to show you the trailer before we get into the synopsis. Flesh Wound producer Todd. We look at that day as the day we met the fifth member of our crew. Gentlemen, assume your positions. Thurgood, Brian. Kenny and Scarface. You guys feel like you're floating? This weed is fantastic. Their job stink. You suck. You suck. You suck. You're cool. Their <laughs> sex life is zero. How do I know you're not lying to me? How do I know you got panties on, Mary Jane? I don't. And their lives are going nowhere. I'm a professional meter hopper. <laughs> you have smoked yourself retarded. Yo, who's our munchies tonight, yo? I make sure chocolate. Gotta have chocolate. Graham crackers. Pizzas, man. Celery, grape jelly, peanut butter, popcorn, beef jerky. With water. Whole lot of water. You must have been so hungry. But now... <laughs> They're in trouble. Oh, oh my God. I just gave him some candy and some chips and some pink popcorn. And- All we gotta do is raise ten percent of one million, yo. Which, by our calculations, is fucking impossible, man. Yeah. The Food and Drug Administration are having us do a study. One pound of marijuana, and you can sign for it right here. Oh, yeah. Hey, fuck you. I got it. I know how we could get Kenny out. Weed, man. We'll sell weed. Isn't that the custodian? Maui, Wowie. We love his heart. I pick up that car with the smiley face. This guy is weak, crazy. We're not drug dealers. We're fundraisers. Go get me this, Mr. Nice Guy. Well, you know, I'd be from Jamaica, man. What part of Jamaica? Right near the beach. Boy! From Universal Pictures comes a story that proves I'm somebody's bitch. Oh! Three heads are better than one. Who's out, man? I just stopped smoking yesterday. I remember when a dime bag cost a dime. Half baked. I'm sorry. All right, and there was the trailer for Half Baked, and here reads the synopsis that I just pulled it from Google. When a member of their crew gets arrested for killing a New York City police horse by feeding it junk food, three slackened stoners are forced to get off their butts and raise bail by setting. Rather, by selling pots stolen from a pharmaceutical lab. It's a risky plan, but hey, these are stand-up guys who would do anything to help out a friend in need. This, so we had talked about uh, a couple weeks ago, Cheech and Chong, and it was just kind of, or I'm I'm sorry, uh, Pineapple Express. And we we talked about how the pacing was kind of off, like, It was slow getting going and it was slow going through it. But this was so just like, I mean, one of the opening scene, 
believe the opening scene is them as children, their first time smoking, you know, and right after that is where you see them in the occupation. Then he talks about what you do to get weed. So it goes so quickly that I believe what happens in the synopsis happens within the first 10 minutes of the film. Definitely way before, <laughs> like it feels it happens so close to the beginning that it almost feels like it's kind of gets it out of the way, gets the exposition out of the way just so they could have fun with the gags. What are your guys' thoughts? Initial thoughts rather. You know, after the first couple jokes, I do have to say, I did feel a little bit of a lull. Um, and I remember always looking back on this movie fondly. Um, again, first time watching it sober. Um, but uh, it was, I was curious, like going through it, um, how it was going to feel overall. But I think there was only a small little window where I was like, all right, it's a little slow, but man, then it just picks up and starts running. So um, the movie still holds up, uh, even sober. <laughs> and so it was, it was awesome, man. Like, this is still one of my favorite stoner comedies of all time. And Flesh from producer Todd. And yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I've, I've loved this one. I've always loved this one. I've watched it both ways. I mean, and, and off some booze, too. So all three ways, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah it, it's, it's just one of those that hit at the right time. We really didn't have, you know, a lot of that kind of humor coming, coming out. And, I mean, Chappelle in his prime. Mm-hmm. Not that he's ever like not in more, his prime. But yeah, like. but this was more like towards like the early side of his. No, no, it was, definitely was. But I mean, I'm he, pretty sure this was his first like starring role. He was in a in a sitcom called Buddies that was canceled. In a film. But, yeah, but yeah. F well, he had other like he was in Con Air, but I mean, this is his. You're right. He's this is his first starring. Well, it's an ensemble movie, but he's obviously the the lead. Yeah. Player. Wait, back up. He was in Con Air. <laughs> yeah, he's the the the. Well, the funny black guy, <laughs> I don't remember his name. Yeah. Um, oh. Rewatch it. It's funny now that you realize who it is. Yeah, I think I've only watched Con Air once. Um, and so, yeah, I might have to go back just for that. <laughs> but, yeah, he was hungry and it, it he killed it on this one. It was just the right, right thing at the right time. Right. Now, I usually put in effort to locate the commentary of the films that we usually review and discuss here. When looking up the commentary for this particular film, apparently it is solely the director, Tamara Davis, who repeatedly uh, expresses her gratitude for working with everybody and how wonderful they were, as well as pointing out and laughing about the jokes and the scenes. From what I uh, could gather, it wasn't very informational and... I don't know who this person is. So even if it just felt like the director's just sitting next to you watching the movie, it's like, well, I wouldn't want to watch the movie with you anyway, because I don't know who you are. <laughs> so just a note on that real quick. But to get to, oh, I had mentioned that I had felt mandela with this movie, where I had thought yeah. one famous line was said by one character, and it was actually said by another. Uh, so the I'm sorry todd yes i was gonna say is this your favorite line or just the line in general no just the okay. this is just the line in general that i think is probably the most popular line from the movie i thought this was said by jim brewer's character brian but this was actually said by guillermo diaz's character scarface when he's quitting his job mm. and he says fuck you fuck you uh. you're cool fuck you for some reason i thought that was jim brewer's line when he before he broke into the Jerry Maguire. Just uh, just for the record, yes, Ozzy did miss one fuck you, so anyone who was counting noticed. <laughs> good call. <laughs> but that was just a Mandela effect on, on my part that I was, I guess, pleasant to get confirmation on. Mm -hmm. You guys have any weird things like that? Just, the, just the end credits. I don't remember that uh, <laughs> post-credit <laughs> scene at all. And I think it's because I watched it on Comedy Central and all mm. that good stuff for the most part. Oh, and they're already putting on another show. Yeah. The credits <laughs> right, are going. right. Well, it's like right. this small on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> right. Yeah. I actually, I do have a funny story. And it kind of rolls into one of my favorite lines. Well, it's, it's probably not my favorite lines, but it's the one that sticks out of my head the most. Sure. And, th and that is when uh, they're leaving the prison. 
and you know he meets Mary Jane and they're in the car and he says you know I want to go out for ice cream and in the back seat they all just break out motherfuckers said ice cream and they're dying <laughs> <laughs> this is where it becomes personal I legitimately had that exact scenario with my friends in the back because of that movie I didn't say ice cream but they just yelled out what was a little too flirty motherfucker said ice cream <laughs> and I started dying Oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah. So that so that is also your favorite line. I don't seen. It it jumps out of my head the most. I don't think it's my. The, I have a specific. I don't scene. mean to judge. I mean I'm not judging. No, no. Well, I have a part, and it makes me die every time. Do you want me to just jump into what that is, or do yeah, to... okay. Um, when Thorogood and the scientists are talking, yes, and he's like, "Oh, excuse me, janitor," and he's like, "Yes, scientists," and then just that whole scene. <laughs> And then when he's like sends him to go do stuff, and he's like, "Yeah, hold my mop," or he's like, "Hold my shit," it just goes. Right. Yeah, that right. whole interaction—that's my favorite bit. Yeah, mop the shit up before I yeah. get back. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a favor, mop the shit up before I get back. Right. That whole scene. Greg, how about you? Oh favorite line man, or scene? I was that. This is a tough one to narrow down. Um. I think I'm just going to have to stick with Bob Saget. Like, <laughs> that moment, man. If that hands down was one of the funniest mo moments. And it's funny because, like, there's a moment before that that I wanted to say is, oh, I remember this being my favorite segment. But, like, then when that happened, I was like, nope. Nope, that's, that's going to be it. <laughs> and, and you know what sells that scene the best is when the other guy says, I see him do it. <laughs> or I see it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> now, for those unaware, I mean, how do you guys feel about the spoiler? I mean, I, I think we're we're twenty years past the spoiler. Okay, role. so there's a point okay. when Dave Chappelle's character Thurgood has to go to rehab when he's talking about his addiction to marijuana. That's where everybody starts getting upset, and like marijuana is not what. What are you talking about? And then Bob Saget says, "Like you never suck dick for coke, man." <laughs> and you hear somebody else. I've seen him do it. So <laughs> boo this man. <laughs> <laughs> uh i oh sorry yes Tom. no i was just going to throw out there which we didn't mention at the, at the top this will be hitting blu-ray june 22nd if you want to ah. i still say this was a bad call on kino this should have been out this month but right yeah <laughs> i agree kino's a jerk yep <laughs> is that the company that yeah that's released? kino lorber they're releasing it. kino lor lorber kino lorber yes kino lorber <laughs> No, it sounds like a, a made-up journalist name. All right, it's Kino. Like K Kino like Lorber from the Bone of Park Times. <laughs> okay. Studio Classics. There we go. Now, my favorite time, it only happened twice, but each time I, I busted up laughing was when Thurgood would uh, pretend or act as though he was having an orgasm. First, when <laughs> receiving... The pound of marijuana and, and he's like, I'll just and he, he just he's like spasming. And then when they actually get to the when he later in the movie gets to a room where <laughs> it sees a bunch of it and he he's doing his thing. I, I laughed pretty hard on that one. But still, this was more I felt instead of this. This was like like almost like a almost how high how high was with just nailing joke after joke after joke after joke after each time. Uh that it wasn't like there was one really funny moment. There's just a ton of smaller funny moments. The horse still made it. The horse absolutely. <laughs> the horse. I mean, you get you get that from the trailer. Yeah. Uh, but still, and in terms of uh, when I come to rate this, I can't as much as how. So just maybe I should it explain it this yeah. way. <laughs> I want to explain it this way. Okay. When the movie's done, how am I feeling? Right. I'm feeling fantastic. Like I've laughed my ass off and it was totally worth the hour and 22 minutes. I just gave it. So yes, of course I'm giving it a five. Yeah. That's why Todd was just like, just say it, just give Three it the down. five. <laughs> but yeah, um, I, I understand, you know, Greg, I, I don't know exactly before you give your review. Can you shine a light on where you felt the lull happened? Because I mean, maybe it was because I didn't watch it sober that I didn't, you know, but I take notes and like, you know, so I'm the was, I'm, where they mentioned the creative stoner. I'm the like productive stoner. Right. So uh, it was just the moment 
like it wasn't that long. It was just a small break, like after they did the intro and then it was getting them going and up until the point where the diabetic course happened. Like it was that break between the two. Like that wasn't mm. much time, but I was like, all right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> and that's when I was like, oh, is this movie not as not as good as I remember? And then like diabetic course happened. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then the moment where and I was like, OK, this is probably going to land a four and a half for me. But when they got to that point where they started listing off the different types of stoners and I was like, I know <laughs> each and every one of those. Like, this is spot on. I was like, I can't. I have to give it a five. <laughs> so and I do have to say there were quite a few of those, uh, uh, you know, being able to create things, uh, stoner moments within uh, a household that was a part of it one point in time. <laughs> I remember having a guitar hero guitar in which the uh, strap, the, the the place where you put the hook, the strap on one side was the actual down stem and a hose went through to come out the other end. So you can smoke while playing guitar hero from a guitar, guitar hero guitar. It was fantastic. So yeah, five. Hands so you're, <laughs> you're the MacGyver stoner. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. There you go. <laughs> Uh, all right, so Todd, review time. <sighs> this was oh, not. I'm gonna have no, to punch him in the I'm face. Not, I'm not. I'm not even. Yeah, it's an easy five from me. Um, still a fun movie. Still, you can watch it sober. You don't have to. Um, one thing I did want to mention, and this kind of tripped me out. I don't know if you guys are aware. Probably not, because you, you know, you don't have like a four year old. But I, yeah, that's probably not well, that I know of. Uh, so hopefully you, you just look for actually ball. definitely not for sure well not not a four-year-old um the i was watching cartoons with him and i immediately recognized Har harlan williams voice he's uh, a, a vo not only the voice but he's the creator of a disney series puppy dog pals which was huge and i'm just like well He's making that money, but it just threw me off here. And Kenny talking to these little puppies. I was like, what the hell? It's funny because he was the kindergarten teacher in the film. So it fits. Yeah, it does fit. Well, that covers our review for Half Baked. Uh, feel free to join us next week. We'll be back with a new episode and we will discuss. I mean, it shouldn't be any shock. There's a reason I'm wearing this shirt. We're doing space balls next week, ladies and gentlemen. And I cannot wait to talk about that one. Holy Toledo, my favorite films of all time. Once again, that'll be uh, next week. What's <laughs> with the grunting? Of course, from it's Flesh like Own Producer Todd. It's like airplane. Jerk. Yeah, yeah, shut up. <laughs> you to respond to that. <laughs> well, I guess you'll have to tune in next week to find out. You will. So that's Flesh Own Producer Todd. That is world-famous juggler Greg from the Northern Bay Area, and I'm Ozzy V. We'll see you next week right here on Flesh Wound Farce. <laughs>